Hey there everyone, Ray from Classic Game Room here. As time has gone on and we see more games based on movies or other media, we're seeing less direct adaptations and more original stories that either continue where the movie left off, or serve as a gap between movies. Games like Terminator Salvation, that was a prequel to the actual movie, have become more and more common. In that vein, I present to you Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2 from Sega and Marvel once again picks up right where the movie left off. James Rhodes has the War Machine armor and Tony is still our favorite wise guy billionaire playboy. A new villain though is ready to emerge and wants revenge on Tony for being just like Classic Game Room. Too damn awesome! The game opens up with an attack on Tony's database warehouse where some robotic drones are trying to download Tony's greatest creation, his constantly evolving AI Jarvis. This opening level serves as a tutorial for not only Iron Man, who is inside the warehouse, but also for War Machine serving as backup outside the warehouse, as half the game will end up being played with you being Iron Man, and half of it where you being able to be War Machine. And there'll be a couple levels we'll be able to choose between the two. After thwarting the attack, Tony and Rhodey begin to track the trail of the would-be attackers to Russia, and with the assistance of S.H.I.E.L.D., who Tony pals around with on occasion, confront who they think is the mastermind behind the operation. Classic Iron Man Dylan, the Crimson Dynamo. Only after downing the Dynamo do they realize that they are just scraping the tip of the iceberg, and that a classic Avengers villain is ready to make a bid for global supremacy. Compared to the first Iron Man movie game, Iron Man 2 is leaps and bounds ahead of its predecessor. It has a system that allows you to be just like Tony and enhance your weapons via various advancements that you can purchase via credits you earn on level performance from various combat programs that you can put into your armor, to the damage modules for your repulsor rays. Everything is upgradable and customizable. You can even switch out weapons altogether. If you prefer Tony's plasma shotgun over his missile launcher, then so be it. If War Machine's minigun is just too many, then maybe an extra rocket launcher would do the trick. And as you perform better and better in certain levels, you can even customize the classic armors that you can unlock. Whether they're the Mark II or the Mark VI, or something from the comics like the Ultimate Armor, if you've unlocked it, you can use it and add weapons to it. Visually, the game is also light years ahead of the first, and all the weapons and characters look much sharper, although still not what we've come to expect from, um, from the modern consoles. Kind of a trend that we've seen from Sega lately. Unfortunately, a couple of the control problems from the first game crop up, as when you get hit by enemy fire, you get so turned around that you end up getting pummeled even more than you were originally, before you can even react! This becomes especially true later in the game and makes the final boss fight one of the most frustrating I've ever had to overcome simply because I couldn't fly and fire where I wanted to accurately. I will say this though, they definitely fixed the flying problems they had in the first game, at least in terms of get, having the feel of accelerating in the Iron Man or War Machine armor. That sense of speed is critical to a lot of the outdoor levels. Another downer, unfortunately, for the game is that Robert Downey Jr., after seeing the first game, probably, wanted nothing to do with the second. I am Iron Man. You wanted the best, you got the best. And I'm not gonna lie to you. Same went with ACDC in their soundtrack. Don Cheadle and Samuel L. Jackson, though, were kind enough to lend their voices to the game, and the actor who played Tony in the game sounds enough like Downey Jr. that we can let it slide. Lamb of God also did a solid job providing a completely original soundtrack for the game, so at least the game still sounds pretty solid. With a lot more unlockables this time around than the brand new customization features, Iron Man 2 at least tries to give you enough to keep you around for a while, but even on hard mode this game should only take most gamers 10 hours to completely put through its paces. Still though, with all the improvements, if you're a hardcore Iron Man fan, you'll probably enjoy this one enough to make a full-blown purchase. At the very least, if you like the movies, you should add this to your rental queue. Stupid Americans.